Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about graphing rational functions with holes and even without holes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do everything that we've normally done with rational functions. So the first thing that we're going to do is find the undefined values. So undefined, remember, is when the denominator is set equal to 0. So 3x plus 9 equals 0 minus 9, 3x equals negative 9, divide by 3, and x is equal to negative 3. Now we have to determine if that undefined value is a vertical asymptote or if it's a whole. So what we're going to do next is simplify. So I have f of x equals, now x squared minus 16, the numerator, can be broken up into x plus 4 and x minus 4. And the denominator, I could take out a GCF of 3, and I'm left with x plus 3. So as you can see, this can't be simplified anymore, and there are not, there's nothing that can be crossed off, so that means this undefined value is going to be my vertical asymptote. So we have some information that we can fill in over here. We have the domain. We know that the domain is all real numbers except the undefined values. So except for when x is equal to negative 3. We have our vertical asymptote, which is the line x equals negative 3. And we don't have any holes because nothing crossed it off, so we're going to write none for holes. Now, horizontal asymptotes, we have to look at the original equation, and we're going to have to analyze the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator, the power, is a 2, and the degree of the denominator, again, that means the highest power, is 1. So because this 2 here is greater than this 1, that means that there is no horizontal asymptote, but there is a slant asymptote. So we're going to go ahead and find that. So that's my next piece, is to find the slant. And remember, the way that we do that is we divide the original fraction. So we have 3x plus 9 and we're going to divide that into x squared minus 16. But remember, we need a placeholder, so 0x minus 16. So I want to see how many times I can divide 1, or how many times 3 can go into 1, and it can't, so we're just going to divide. So it goes in 1 third. So 1 third x. And now we're going to multiply. 1 third times 3 is just 1, so that will be 1x squared. And then we have 1 third x times 9, which is 3x. And we're going to subtract. And this becomes negative 3x. Bring down the minus 16. Now, how many times can I have 3x go into negative 3x? Negative 1 times. So, minus 1. And then we multiply. So, negative 3x minus 9. And we subtract. Now, this remainder here is irrelevant. Um, I know it's not 0, but I'm just saying the actual remainder there is irrelevant because we want the slant asymptote, which is here. So when we write the equation, we always have to remember that we are writing it with a y equals. So the slant is y equals 1 third x minus 1. Now we have a y-intercept and our x-intercepts. So remember, to find the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0. And to find the x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. And we're going to use the reduced fraction. So nothing reduced, so we're just going to use this one here. Okay, so 
f of x equals x plus 4, x minus 4, over 3, x plus 3. And for the y-intercept, we're going to set every x equal to 0. So 0 plus 4, 0 minus 4, 3, 0 plus 3. And we have 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So when we multiply them, we get negative 16. over 3 times 3, which is 9. So that's just about 2, negative 2. So it's y equals, we'll say, approximately negative 1.9-ish. Because remember, we're not allowed to use the calculator. So it's somewhere in between negative 1.5 and, and 2. So we can leave it as a fraction, which makes life a lot easier. So the y-intercept is the point 0, negative 16, over 9. And again, for the x-intercept, we're just going to set y equal to 0. So 0 equals x plus 4, x minus 4, 3 over x plus 3. Put this over 1 and cross multiply. And here, 0 times anything is 0, so that's going to cancel. And I have x is equal to negative 4, and x is equal to positive 4. So 4, 0, and negative 4, 0. Okay, so now that we have all that information, we're going to use it to plot this graph by hand. The first thing I want to put down are any asymptotes. So I'm going to put down my vertical asymptote, which is the line x equals negative 3. So I'm going to use different colors. If you have that, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So x equals negative 3. And the slant asymptote is the line y equals 1 third x minus 1. Now if you remember correctly, in an equation of line, this is y equals mx plus b, where b is the y value of the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is at negative 1. So right there is where I'm going to start. So I'm at negative 1. And remember, the slope is up 1 over 3. So from that point, I'm going to go up 1 over 3. And put the next point, up 1 over 3. And now go down the other way. 1 over 3. Now, please make sure when you are doing your asymptotes that you are using dotted lines because asymptotes are lines that it approaches but never touches. So these asymptotes must always be dotted lines. So this is y equals one-third x minus one. Okay, the next part is we're going to put down our x and y intercepts. So my x-intercepts are at four, zero, and negative four, zero. So there's one here, and there's one here. And my y-intercept is 0, negative 16 over 9. Now we said that that was just about negative 2. So we'll just put it 0, negative 1.9-ish. So now this tells us all the information that we need because we know that asymptotes, like we said, are lines that approach but never touch. So if this is a dot and this is a dot, then that shows me that the graph is going to curve around those y intercept, uh, excuse me, those asymptotes. That's where it's approaching but never touching. Same thing with this one. We know it's here and here. And that's it. That's all we need to know. And we even more so know that the graph can't be up here anywhere because then it's not a function. It would hit the vertical line test. can't be down here because it would hit the line more than once. So it has to just be in those two spots. And that's it. So the question is really asking, the last part is what's the range? And you see how this graph goes up forever and then down forever? We are going to say here that the domain is... Nothing other than negative infinity to infinity. Excuse me, the range.
Okay, let's move on to the next example. Oops. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find all of the values. So the first thing I want to do is find where this function is undefined. So undefined is where the denominator is equal to zero. So I'm going to set x squared plus x minus 6 equal to zero. I'm going to factor. And my undefined values are negative 3 and 2. Now I need to see if any of those are vertical asymptotes or holes. So I'm going to simplify my original function. So the x minus 2 can stay. And I'm going to simplify the denominator to what I did with the undefined values, the factors. And I notice that these x minus 2's cancel. And that my fraction can be simplified to this. So this tells me that 2 is my whole, because that's what crossed off over here, and this negative 3 is nothing other than my vertical asymptote. So let's start answering some questions. The domain, again, is all real numbers except for when the values are undefined, and it's defined at x is equal to negative 3 and 2. The vertical asymptote is the line x equals negative 3. And the whole is now a coordinate. And the whole is 2 comma something. So we need to find that because before today, all we did for the whole was we just found the x value of where the whole was. But now we have to graph it, so we need a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to find f of 2. And we're going to use this simplified equation. So 1 over 2 plus 3. So again, I'm plugging it into here, the simplified equation. So f of 2 is 1 fifth. So the whole, when x is 2, y is 1 fifth. Now, to find the horizontal asymptote, we're going to analyze the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. Now, the degree of the numerator, or the power, here is 1 and the power of the denominator is 2. So the numerator is less than the denominator, so therefore the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0, and that means there will be no slant. Okay, and now we need to find our x and y intercepts. So x intercept and y intercept. Again, with this, you're going to use the simplified, I'll even put stars here, so you know to use the simplified equation. So f of x equals 1 over x plus 3. And the x-intercept, we're setting y equal to 0. And when we cross multiply, we get 1 equals 0, which kind of makes no sense because 1 times 1 was 1, and 0 times anything is 0. So that shows me that there are no x-intercepts. So that is actually none. And now we need to find the y-intercept, again, using the simplified equation. And we're going to plug that x to be 0. And y is equal to 1 third. So that is the point 0, 1 third. So let's start graphing. Okay, so I'm going to start with the vertical asymptotes and holes and y-asymptotes, uh, or horizontal. So I have a horizontal asymptote here, which we're making sure we use dotted. And this is the line y equals 0. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. And we have a hole at 2 comma 1 fifth. So 2 and 1 fifth is smaller than 1, so it's about there. Now you want to make sure it's a hole. Um, it's difficult for me to do it here with the stylus, but try your best to make it look open like a hole. Okay? And then let's plot our y-intercept of 0, 1 third. So that's about here as well. That's a closed circle. Like I said, again, it's difficult for me, but try to do the best you can. 
So you can really see what the graph is going to look like in this corner. Because we know that this graph has to go approaching this asymptote over here, and then it has to make its way back up here and approach that. So I can really graph that section right now as something like this. So we know the graph looks like that, but, but now the question really is, where is the graph on this side? We know it can't be down here because then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So it's got to be either this way or this way, right? So we kind of have to figure out what happens at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4 maybe. So let's see. When x is equal to negative 4, this is where we have to use something called additional points. So we're going to try, again, you use the simplified equation, so that gets a star. So we're going to try the original, which is 1 over x plus 3. And we want to see where the graph is at x equals negative 4. So I'm going to plug in a negative 4 for 3. And negative 4 plus 3 on that denominator is negative 1. So the point is negative 4, negative 1. So we can go ahead and actually graph that point now. So negative 4, negative 1 is down here. So that means that the graph is in this quadrant down here. It kind of just approaches that way. So that's really, that's it. That's graphing rational functions. Um, you know, the only other question that we didn't answer here was the range. And it clearly goes down forever and then it goes up forever here, but it never touches y equals zero because that's a horizontal asymptote. So we can say that this range is all real numbers except for when y is equal to zero. And that's it. So we just did two examples where sometimes we have holes, sometimes we need additional points, uh, sometimes we have a slant asymptote and sometimes we don't. So we're going to practice this stuff over the next few days in class. But if you have any questions at this time, please jot down anything, any questions you might have and we'll go over everything tomorrow in class. All right. Have a good night.